Yes, yes, okay, so today we are back for another tutorial Tuesday and this one is slightly different. Loads of people have been asking, Jack, how do you train panel on your own? If I haven't got someone to play, how can I practice it? Well, today I'm giving you a lot the answer. I'm gonna break it down into four easy steps and there's really not much equipment you need. So let's get into it. Okay, so step one is pretty simple. It's gonna be ball mastery. You're gonna have to have the technical skills down before you go in against an opponent. So to start with, we're gonna get ourselves a ball and these are the two that I mainly use. This is a Salah otherwise known as a futsal ball, so it's low bounce, you check that out. Boom, low bounce, and this is a Monta, which is also low bounce, however it's made of denim, so it's slightly more grippy. Uh, it's what you also use in competitions. The other ball that I normally use, which I don't currently have, because it's died on me, because I've used it every day, is a full freestyle ball, and it's pretty similar to a Monta, it's denim, low bounce. So what I'd recommend is getting yourself a ball which is low bounce, it makes it easier to do the ground moves with, because it's not bobbling around on the concrete too much. However, you can definitely do this for normal football as well. So normally with the ball, I'd train against, for example, Rabona GK or other players, but when we're on our own, we have to do it differently. So, when I started Panera, I actually trained 99% of the time on my own. I was working on ground moves, I was working on skills, which I could just practice on my own without need of opposition. Uh, I then later on convinced my dad to train against me and I convinced friends to train with me. I taught my friends Panna and now some of them are great Panna players for Bowen GK, Man Like DB, SP9 Football for example, all of them are insane. And that was just from us training together and really picking up the sport together. However, if you don't have a friend to convince and you don't have a family member, that is what this video is for. And step one, the thing that I worked on for hours and hours and hours was ground moves. I learned new techniques and I learned new ways to manipulate the ball so that when I was going to be against an opponent, I would be able to have the ball control. So that's step one. We're going to be working on ground. Okay, so how I practice ground moves and how I recommend you to practice ground moves is to first start with obviously having your football and now think about the space and where you're going to train. You want it to be a safe environment. You want the concrete to be good. You don't want it to be wet. You don't want it to be slippery. You're not going to get injured from training. That's the last thing we want. I've trained at a lot of places. I've trained at something we called the street, which was this one way road. It was concrete and it had street lights. So after school, it was still light. It wasn't the best place to train. However, it was light and it did have concrete. So that was good. I've trained at football park. I had to walk 40 minutes a day to get to the football park. I've trained at a bandstand, which is this kind of like weird building where people play music, but it's got a slight roof. So when it rains, it's okay. But if it's windy and it rains, then it gets wet, but it was concrete, so that wasn't too bad. I've also trained, there was a place called The Tunnel, which was basically, there was this house and it had this bit under it, and we trained there. Trained at car parks, multi-story car parks, done that a lot. Trained at one in Ramsgate, multi-story car park, and I've trained one in Margate called Morrison's. Yeah, so I'm gonna be putting loads of those clips in right now so you can get the idea of where I was training. Obviously the aim is to be safe. If you have somewhere close to your home, that is the best. My favorite training spot was actually outside in front of my house, just on this little path. My neighbors got very angry at me. However, it was definitely worth it. So once we've got our football and we've got the location, now it's time to work on our session. What we're gonna do, I spent at least 20 minutes every day working on ground moves. And that, for me, this was super important. This is when I improved the most. The reason that I say 20 minutes a day is because then every day that you come back to train, you know that you're gonna progress a little. Some days you're very busy, you've got school, you've got work, you can't put too many hours. You still manage to do 20 minutes, even if it's raining. That's when you know that you're really gonna improve. This place here, this court, we've trained here in the rain many times. I'm gonna put that in. It was actually kind of insane. <laughs> Thank you.
obviously if you have more time so it's the weekend or say you've got a free day or a free couple of hours train more so don't train too much because we don't want to get injured and get shin splints because we're always training on concrete so a normal ground move session for me even if it was only 20 minutes would normally i'd be working on a skill a combo and i'd break it down into weeks so say the next week I'd want to learn a new combo. I'd say, okay, well, on the Monday, I'm going to train it. And then, you know, I might get there on the Tuesday. I'm going to train it a bit more, make it smoother. By Wednesday, I should have it down. I should be able to do it. And then maybe I'm going to look at a different skill. Maybe I'm going to look at a couple of panel moves. I'm going to try and learn them. And then by the end of the week, on the Friday, what I try and do is film uh, the original combo that I was doing. And I'd try and have it down smooth. Then the next week, I'm going to pick a new combo or a new skill that I'm going to work on for the whole week. And then every week we're learning a new combo and new skills. And if you're fitting them in, you could be learning three or four new skills and combos per week. I used to save videos for my favorite panel players and I'd see moves that I really wanted to learn. And then once I've learned them, I try and combine them with my other favorite moves. And in doing so, I'd create variations. And when I do mistakes, then maybe they'll become new ideas. You know, that's how the mousetrap was made. It looked like a mistake. And then, wow, one of the best moves going. So I think it's all about embracing your mistakes taking your favorite moves, putting them together, and then really trying to create something new. So, ground move session, I would say, recommended, if you haven't started yet, learn the combos that I've got in the tutorial. So they look a bit like this. And if you haven't learned them, check the iCard, there'll be tutorials there, which you can learn right away, and this can be your first ground move session. And that's step one, it's just gonna be working on ground moves to get your technical skill level higher. Also, if you're having difficulty with ground moves and you can't quite get to the next level, or you can't improve your skill and you can't get it down, don't worry about it, just repeat, repeat, repeat. Trust me, I spent many, many hours trying to get better at ground moves, trying to improve them, trying to learn them on my weak foot. And it just takes time, but that is the fun of it, and you know you're gonna improve, so just put the hours in, and I guarantee you'll be able to do it. For a little motivation, I'm gonna show you a little snippet of one of my first ground move combos right now. And as you can tell, uh, you know, I've improved a bit since then. So I properly started when I was 10, which means if you're younger than 10 and you're already playing football, you are better than me when I was your age. And uh, if you started before you were 10, you know, you're probably better than me as well, or you will at least be better than me when you're my age. So the whole point is just keep it up, put the hours in and you'll get the reward. But now we're gonna go on to step two. Let's get it. Okay, so step two, this is a big one. This is training finisher moves. What I mean by a finisher move, this is the type of move which will actually give a panna. It's not the type of move which you're gonna move around the pitch with or it's gonna look stylish. This is literally the killer shot. So here's an example of some of the finisher moves I've already taught on this page. So all of those are finished moves that I've already taught on this page and there will be a lot more that I've taught on this page. Just for a quick example though, for if I was to do ground moves, this is called clapping, this is not a finisher move. However, a move like the chop, boom, that will be a finisher move because you can use that directly for a panna. If I was doing the grounds combo and then I did a clap like this, and then I put it through, that is then a finisher. So some moves can be ground moves and finishers, some are specifically finishers. Step two is to work on this, so now I'm gonna show you how. So to start with, with finishers, what you should do is just practice the movement and the motion to see if you can actually do it. I'm gonna take sleep chop as an example. Broken down into different steps, we've got the sleep, We've got the roll out and we've got the chop. It's a very effective move. You'll see Easy Man hit it a lot. If you can't do this yet, go over to the tutorial here. However, what I do when I was first learning this, I'd practice it, just see if I can get it down. You know, just the movement. And then I'd see if I can change speeds. Boom, okay. Once I get to that stage and I'll try it left foot, I'm still terrible at this move left foot, so let's say I need to work on. How I do that is just by getting used to sleeps, this movement, and then we do the roll out. Okay, and then we'll just finish it with the chop, all right? We're gonna have to practice this. Have We don't have an opponent to practice. Also, if you do have an opponent to practice with, maybe you're gonna wanna train this on your own so that when you play against them, you'll surprise them, all right? That's how we do. This is how I've always practiced. What we do, we get a target. Bottle. Next piece of equipment that we need. We've got football, we've got a safe space, and we've got a bottle. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put the bottle down, we're gonna get to a distance away, and with the final touch, we're gonna aim to hit the bottle. Uh, if we can hit the bottle, obviously it means that we could hit a gap in the future, so that's why we're doing it. So, for example, maybe I'll be this far away. Boom, just like that, that'll be the first one. But we're gonna take it up a level. When you can do the move, and you can get the motion, and you can aim it, now we're gonna try and put it in like it's a little bit of a game. So we're gonna do some ground move combos, and then we're gonna try and hide the skill and do it, and hit the target from different angles. Oh. 
Okay, so as you can see, this is a great way to practice your accuracy. This is something that I've done a lot. Uh, another way that I used to do it was actually by using a chair and trying to get it through the legs of a chair. So if you're inside a house, that's a great way to do it. Of course, you should always have a water bottle with you because you've got to stay hydrated. So I think this is a pretty good one to have when you're on the pitch. You can use it for all types of finisher moves, all types of panners. Yeah, I've already shown you lots of different types of finish moves. And in the future on Tutorial Tuesday, there'll be more finish moves to help you learn. And this is something that I expect you to be doing and something you should be practicing. One thing as well is get creative with the finish moves. Make sure you're using it on your weak foot, your strong foot. Just then, I was only doing strong foot. However, what I should really be doing is because I'm not too good at sleep chop on my left foot. Let's practice that on my left foot. So after I'm filming this video, that's what I'm going to practice. And of course, you can even practice accurate. Now, step three. Okay, so step three is now to start imagining that we're actually in a panel tournament or a panel match. And we're going to be using our ground moves and our finisher moves. And we're going to be visualizing what we're going to do. So for that, we now need goals. I have these goals. These are from Argos, which is this shop in the UK. Basically, they're pretty good. They're quite big. But also what I've used a lot is cones. I've also used shoes. I've used rocks. I've used sticks. Many, many things, especially jumpers. Oh, and backpack. Backpacks are a good size for a goal. So normally I would have my football stuff in the backpack, take my football stuff out. Use the backpack as a goal. There's many, many clips where we've been using backpacks at goal. If you have an actual goal, perfect. If you have cones or jumpers or bags, also perfect. The size that I normally do will be about two and a half of my shoe. I'm a size 10, so uh, kind of four footballs, all right? So we can stand in it, but also there'd be enough room to score. Pitch itself isn't too big. I vary the size of it, so where the other goal is, depending on what I want to practice. If I want to practice faster dribbling and more trying to get around the player, I make the pitch a bit bigger. Sometimes I make it smaller, but if I want to practice close control, I make the pitch smaller. Right now, normally, for like five steps or so, if you want it small, but if you want it bigger, you can go all the way up to like 10 steps, for example. But for now, we'll stay on about seven. Essentially, what we're going to do, we're going to move around the pitch. So then what you've got to do, you've got to pick a side. I'll be the corn side, so I'm going to put the ball down, and we're going to start playing here. And what we're going to do we're going to be working on doing ground moves moving around the space you also have to imagine that a panel pitch normally has some sort of octagon going uh, so you don't want to go too far out wide and of course you can't go behind this bit the game will be over so what you're going to do on your own no opponent you're just going to imagine there's someone there you're going to try and move around do some ground combos and finish your combos by scoring all right so that's the aim so it look a bit like this i'm here i'm going to be doing some ground moves and maybe i'm going to use a finisher to go to go into the goal or i'm going to use a shooting technique Oh, I will do a tutorial for shooting panel techniques soon. But anyway, we're scoring, we're scoring. So we're here, we're here, there's someone in front of me. I'm gonna get around them, changes of speed, and then oh, we'll get the goal. So it's all about using techniques, trying to imagine your opponents there, what skills would work. It's about changes of speed, dribbling, and also just, I think it's quite important to do ground moves, but not just in the same space, but ground moves whilst you're moving around the pitch, you're going sideways, you're going forwards, you're going backwards, because in a game of panel, you have to move every direction. One thing that's really important is always try and face towards the goal, face towards the opponent. Uh, in a tournament, if you're not looking at them, they're going to take the ball. So, although you might do some ground moves where your back will turn and it'll go towards them, try and keep that direction. And then also, you always know where the goal is, so you can get that goal. Okay, so that is part one of step three. Part two of step three, get the bottle back. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the bottle in the middle of the goal, slightly in front. Uh, you can use other things. I've also used backpacks a lot in the past. This is just the defender's legs, all right? It's just a little bit about the defender, which encourages us to shoot from an angle. Cause normally the defender will have the goal covered reasonably well from the center and you can't just shoot dead flat. So if you hit the bottle, you know that it's not gonna have gone in. The bottle actually takes up quite a lot of space cause it means all of this area you can't hit. So what's gonna happen now is when we're practicing, we're gonna be doing ground moves, we're gonna be going from the side, we're gonna be working on all the skills we wanna work on, and we're gonna be trying to finish with our weak foot as well. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna try and finish at an angle so that the defender or the bottle won't be able to get it. Obviously, you can make it harder by using a bag and so on. So I've trained on a variety of conditions. We look a bit like this, we'll be moving around. We've got the opponent in front of us. If I was to shoot flat now, it wouldn't go in. But if I was to move and create an angle like so, then I could put it around the bottle and into the goal. And that's something that's really valuable to work on. I've done this for many, many hours. I think it really helps when it comes down to competition and it helps to envisage it. And that's what it's all about. It's all about envisaging what's gonna happen and imagining how it's gonna go down so we can practice and be best prepared for it. Now we're on to step four. We're taking it up a level. We're gonna add more equipment as well.
Okay, so now we're on to the final step. This is step four. And what it's gonna be, we're really trying to replicate a whole panel game here. We're gonna be working on doing finish moves. We're gonna be working on finishing. So we brought in some cones. These cones are really good. There's some flat cones that I use. I just bought these off the internet the other day. Uh, normally I've used a lot of things for this. I've used jumpers, I've used shoes. However, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take our side. We've still got the goalkeeper bottle and we've still got the goal. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna scatter some cones. Do it pretty randomly. However, there's certain shapes that you're gonna wanna create. So for example, I'm just gonna chuck these out here. Uh, da -da, da -da. You know, when you're playing, the defender will normally take up the middle of the pitch. So we're going to try and take out this. They're normally going to force you out wide a little. They're going to press high. And because this is quite a small pitch right now, it's only, you know, six steps. We can make it bigger. We could have more cones. Or, you know, right now, I think that's enough cones. But there's one gap that we'd want to create. I'm going to put that one over here, these two white cones, all right? So with this random allocation, now what I'm going to do when practicing, I'm going to look at it, and each cone is the opponent. So this is the same opponent here. He's pushing high. I've got to get around him, I'm shielding. I can now go down the line, but he's covered it. So I'm gonna have to go inside, for example. I can't go out wide, he's there. And it's all about trying to find gaps to hit the shot and put it in. So it's a good way to practice the flow of punters. When you're doing ground moves and you're against an opponent, you know, we're not just gonna suddenly like stop moving and then do the panner. We're gonna be flowing with it and we're gonna do the panner. Even if there's a bit of delay, it's a flowed motion, it's flowed movement. And that's what I really like about this, because we've created some gaps, specifically this one here I created. Lots of times in Pana, the opponent will step back, okay, like this. So they'll be moving, moving, trying to track, and then they'll step back. This is that gap. So, for example, whilst I'm flowing, whilst I'm trying to get space for the goal, maybe I'm gonna do this move, boom. Okay, it didn't go in, the goalkeeper saved it. However, that would have been a Pana against the opponent. And that's just one way to practice these finishes. The more panel you watch, the more gaps you'll be able to spot and the more you'll be able to lay out. For example, this is one gap. Uh, another gap could be like this. It could be an early lunge, they're pressing high and uh, you know, they really want to get the ball. If they tackle me here, they will score. So I don't want to lose the ball here, but they know that. And then the two touch here, we carry on. And we're going to get the goal, okay? So this is how the drill is going to work. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to run through it, uh, play it a couple of times myself. How I would normally do this, I would do it for about five, 10 minutes. I find it very tiring. It's high impact. It's a lot of training. And then what I do is I'd mix it up. So whilst I was playing, maybe I'm like, okay, this gap I've practiced, we're going to change this. We're going to pull the defender inside. In fact, maybe we're just going to make it very tight. And we're just going to work more on dribbling for this one. Then maybe with this change, I'll be working on my close dribbling and trying to get the shot off. Oh, missed it. Mr. Sitter. So for example, this needs more practice. So I recommend do it five to 10 minutes. Then you're gonna to wanna to switch it up and work on other skill sets, and other things that you can practice. So let's give it a go. Working on our ground moves. Maybe there's a finisher I wanna hit. Maybe I pick that guy, boom, through the leg and I go. So that's how it's gonna work. Maybe the next one, I'm gonna dribble through it. We're gonna make it harder. Big bottle, see that? Bigger. There's a gap that I really wanna replicate. So I'm gonna actually make this one very defensive. I'm gonna try and hit this gap with an M10 before scoring. Flow in. Okay, and the opponent's there. We know they're there. We're gonna try and get around them. Change the space. Come so that was a goal. I think this is the best way to train panel on your own. What you've got here, you can work on change of speed, you can work on direction, you can work on your weak foot, you can work on your ground moves, and you can work on your finishes and goal scoring ability all at once. Obviously, it's not the same as having an opponent. It's best to be able to read an opponent. But what we can do here is we can work on the gaps, we can work on the technique, so that when we're against an opponent that steps in a certain way, we can do that. If you were to do this once a week, even twice a week, you would definitely be seeing the benefits. And then as soon as you're going against an opponent, a real opponent, man, they would see the difference and they'd receive a lot of nutmegs and you'd definitely be improving a lot faster if you were to use this alongside it as well. What I also think is great is that, say for example, you often train with Pana players or opponents like I do, I still use this drill, still train it so that when I'm against, you know, for example, Robo and GK, I'm one step ahead because I know I've been training this. I think the more time you have on the ball, uh, the more time you're thinking, you're thinking about gaps, that's when you can be creative, that's when you're gonna think about your own skills and you'll be able to apply them in your own way. It's all about getting that extra surprise. So I hope this tutorial has helped and I wanna see all of you lot trying this. If you film this, please, please, please send it to me on Instagram, street underscore Pana, and I'll try my best to find them all, see the messages and put them on my story and give you some tips if you need it. Feel free to comment down below what skills you wanna learn next in the next week's tutorial Tuesday and I'll try and get that one made as well. Don't forget to smash that like button if you've learned something or if this has helped and please, please, please subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Don't forget the notification bell because I don't want your friends learning it before you do. You know how we do, let's go. That was sick. We have a little fan. <laughs> And she's 
She seems to like the panel. <laughs> no, quick tackling. There you go, there you go. Oh, oh. <laughs> this one. <laughs> so although we're trying to practice with no opposition, sometimes they just want to play panel. <laughs> oh, let's go. Oh, go, go, go. Yeah, I think she beat me there, damn it. 